So I've read through the comments on my No Man's Sky review, and a lot of people kept using the word hype. How the game was overhyped, or how people fell into the hype, and stuff like that. Even when other video game websites cover No Man's Sky, there's a lot of comments also saying hype and whatnot. But no, Sean Murray lied about the game. So what's the difference between hype and lies, or when does hype cross over into lies? It's not that fine of a line as you may think it is, and I really have no issue with hyping up a game. Screenshots show off how good the game looks, video show it in action, and makes it look fun. I get it if the gameplay shown off is scripted. It would be embarrassing if the people playing were taking damage or dying. How bad would it look if the developers sucked at their own game? They're trying to sell you something that costs them a lot of money, so they need to hype it up so this way they could try and get their return investment. Problem with hype is overhyping something. That's usually the result of showing off something that looks really cool but is hardly used. Like Riley from Call of Duty Ghosts. They showed the dog being used quite a lot, but it's only available for a few missions during the first half of the game, and is absent during most of the second half. While the dog was playable for a few missions, it was given center stage attention, which it should never have been if it was just going to be a toy that you played with once and threw back in the toy box to not be used again. That's the result of Activision and Microsoft overhyping the game, and it would be at this point where it seemed that Call of Duty would start to be losing its steam it generated over the last generation. There is also Watch Dogs. The gameplay trailers showed that you could do a lot of cool things with hacking, controlling the city's electronic devices, peeping into people's phones and email, stealing from their bank accounts, and while you could do all this stuff, it wasn't as cool as we thought it would be. It was a nice feature to have, but it wasn't as much a focal point as we thought it would be. It didn't help that Ubisoft showed off more of the hacking rather than the Grand Theft Auto gameplay that was the majority of the game, but I would attribute this to gamers and gaming media filling out the blanks for themselves. I'm not going to bring up the whole graphics debacle because obviously they had to water it down for the PS4 and Xbox One releases, and what they were showing originally had to be on PC hardware and those settings were uncovered in the PC version. Then there's games like Titanfall and Evolve. They looked cool with great ideas and awesome looking gameplay, but when you actually played it, the thrill wore off pretty quickly. Whether this was due to hype or just a natural cycle is up for debate as they were rather transparent with what we were getting with these two games. It's also understandable that games do change direction over the course of development. Some things are added, others are removed for whatever reasons, either too difficult to program or too buggy to launch with, features deemed not fun or they didn't work with the game at all for a variety of reasons, and usually they keep people updated as we'll hear about changes to the game through gaming media. But then we have times where the developers outright lie about the product they're delivering. Let's take Alien Colonial Marines. When it was being shown off, it looked like a terrifying game that would really replicate that feeling of the Aliens franchise. However, when it was released, it was a broken, glitchy game that resembled nothing like what was being shown off. It was laughably bad and rated as one of the worst games of 2013. That's when the term bullshots came up. The game was said to have been developed by Gearbox, but they outsourced the development to another studio. Actually, three other studios taking Sega's cash that was meant for Colonial Marines and using it to fund Borderlands 2. Randy Pitchford went on the offensive, saying that it was a good game because the sales numbers said so, although those sales numbers were based on a lie. Then Sega and Gearbox were involved in a class action lawsuit for false advertisement as the trailers, screenshots, and promotional material was not representative of the actual game. Gearbox pointed the finger at Sega for misrepresentation, while Sega pointed the finger back saying it was Gearbox making the promotional material. Later, the class action part was dropped allowing Gearbox to wiggle out of the lawsuit. Pitchford claimed it as a win for Gearbox while attacking consumers that criticized Colonial Marines and continue to defend Colonial Marines. Which has me asking, how divorced from reality is he? If your development company made a game and gets involved in a class action lawsuit, how do you blame the publisher for misrepresentation? That's admitting that the final game wasn't a representation of the promotional material that the development company sent off to the publisher. Then there's No Man's Sky, a game that I recently reviewed and went on a long-winded rant about how and why Sean Murray lied. Everything that Sean Murray was asked, he said yes to. He could have been asked if AIDS patients would be cured if they played the game, and he would have said yes. Some people have said that he gave vague answers. No, he wasn't being vague. He was asked a direct question and answered yes to everything. There is no vagueness to that. Yes is a direct 
confirmation. And now Hello Games is being investigated by the UK's Advertising Standards Authority because of several complaints about the game's advertising being misleading and is even holding Valve responsible along with Hello Games. Sony will probably be wrapped up into that as well. I myself have filed a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission against Hello Games and Valve due to the game being falsely advertised and for Valve not doing anything to protect its customers. And that's really the difference. Does the promotional material represent the final product? And I'm not going to count stuff from alpha or pre-alpha builds. I mean stuff that's being used to show the game in a working and ready to be sold state. I'll accept beta footage to represent the game, but I'll take it with a grain of salt as I know there can be last minute changes. Games like Titanfall, Evolve, and Watch Dogs were hyped up. Sure, they delivered on what they set out to deliver, at least in my opinion, but what we thought was going to be cool just turned out to be mundane. We're not going to know how we'll react to a hyped up game until we get it in our hands and play with it. The question you need to ask is, did you get what was advertised? And was it just not as good as you thought it would be? If the answer is yes, then it was hyped up. Say what you want about Peter Molyneux. I know I have, but at least he delivers decently made games. I thought the Fable series was pretty cool. He's more the absent-minded professor type of guy. He's got great ideas and does try to put them to use. Sometimes there's misguided attempts like how the way Goddess was handled, which was a mess, but at least there's some sincerity to what he's trying to do. When you have to go back and look at the game's promotional material or the stuff that was shown off at trade shows and ask, where's this version of the game? You know what was sold was falsely added. Advertised. Aliens, Colonial Marines, and No Man's Sky, games that were hyped up, but what they were showing is not in the games, and the games they sold seem more like alpha builds. You have Randy Pitchford laughing his way to the bank after he wiggled his way out of a lawsuit like the leech that he is, not giving a shit and continuing to defend what he knows is a piece of crap, but hoping that there's still people out there foolish enough to buy the snake oil that is Colonial Marines. I just hope that Sega turns around and sues Gearbox for the damage they caused to Sega if the lawsuit goes sour for them. I won't blame Sega for what happened, they just published the game and paid for its production. It was Gearbox's responsibility to make the game, and they just passed it off to a couple of other developers. We have Sean Murray who just took the money and ran, which is probably the most outraging thing. He's maintained radio silence about how all these things he said that you could do aren't in the game, prompting investigations, demands of refunds, and and general negativity whenever his name is brought up. There's game journalists from Kotaku and Polygon saying that the outrage from players is because of lack of clarification. What lack of clarification? Saying yes to a question is not lack of clarification. It's fucking confirmation. There's no gray area here. If I said I was going to pay you $100 for something and then only gave you a single dollar, there's no lack of clarification. You were given a clear answer and therefore have every right to be pissed off. I don't get the logic of people blaming gamers getting hyped up and then angry at what happened with No Man's Sky. The people that say that probably never followed the game and only saw the fallout. If I said I was going to take you to Disney World, showed you pictures and videos of all the attractions and said that's the stuff you're going to get to do, but then I took you to some shitty little carnival and took $60 out of your wallet and decided to fuck off and leave you there, not responding to your calls or texts and dropped off the grid, I'm pretty sure you'd be thoroughly pissed off, wouldn't you? And that's the difference. You got hyped up for Disney World but went to some crappy carnival. It's bait and switch. It's not like you went to Disney World and some of the rides and attractions were closed for repair, or they just weren't as cool as you thought they would be. Hype leads to disappointment. It's not as damaging to a game developer and it's something that can be attributed to gaming media, gamers being excited, and the developers themselves. But it's more subjective, as some people may think it's worth the money while others may not. That's why a lot of developers and publishers have public relations groups, so they know not to say anything misleading so they don't get sued for false advertisement. And you can recover from the disappointment of hype. However, lies lead to anger, destroying the reputation and removing any and all trust the developer had. This is all on the developer, as they are showing things that are not in the final product at all. This is pretty objective as we can see what was shown versus what we got. And if a game journalist like Jeff Keighley, who was following the game's entire development, tells you to charge less and take an early access approach because the game looks unfinished, and you decide to stop talking to them because they're too negative, then maybe, just maybe, you're at fault for lying your ass off.